Hey there guys and welcome back to the channel. It's David here from Prime Audio Reviews and here is the KZ AS16. Now this guy has got eight balanced armatures per side. Let's do a quick unboxing here. There they are. Uh, you can see here is uh, the KZ Plark is back, KZ AS16, and I've just put smudges all over it. Pop that out, put that right there. Here are the ear pieces, look pretty good. They're pretty big. I think they might be a little bit bigger than the uh, ZS10 Pro and ZSN Pro. So you get those. Under here are the Starline ear tips, the paperwork, QC pass, warranty card, user manual, faithful KZ brown cable with uh, preformed ear guides thankfully and not memory wire tips which would be tiny. Here's a look at the ear pieces. Very nicely constructed. We've got um, aluminium face plates here with a kind of a scaled design, left and right markings in nice cursive uh, typeface. On the top here, you can see uh, like other recent KZ models. This uses the socketed two pin connector, which is interesting. Nice transparent shells. You can see the balanced armature drivers inside there. Aluminium gold colored nozzle with the uh, silver metal uh, grill on the top. Yeah, there's one tiny little vent just there as well. As far as build quality goes, they're really nice. Very good. The cable, I think everyone, well everyone who's owned a, a KZ from recent times will be familiar with this. Nothing much has changed. First of all, I'd say it has a very clean and clear sound. Typical of most recent KZ IMs, the BA-10, the KZ ZS-10, ZSN, oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, but most of them have been fairly bright with a lot of clarity lately, uh, but they've also in general had a pretty significant base to counterbalance that boosted lower treble or upper mid-range. This time around with this earphone the signature is less v-shaped. It emphasizes the upper mid-range and the, the sort of lower treble and it's got a very light conservative base. It's sort of like a reverse L-shaped signature. I'd call it more analytical than musical. Detail is very good. Mm. In terms of bass, the the bass, the quality of the bass is actually exceptional. It's really good. It's fast, um, but bass notes have a, a natural kind of a weight. The attack is fast, so uh, kick drums and things have got a nice clean leading edge and good definition. Uh, fast to medium decay adds body to the bass notes, body and impact. Uh, but the thing is the bass notes are sort of in the shadow of the upper mid range. They're, they're pushed behind everything else in the sound signature, which is going to be a matter of contention for some people. The sub bass rolls off fairly early and there's not much sub bass to speak of. It doesn't have much authority it, it sort of trades off weight and authority in favor of uh, control and speed for the bass. Midrange is a little bit on the lean side that's because of the lack of the upper bass. Um, the core midrange is, is fairly neutral I would say. Yeah the midrange as I said sits in front of the bass and sort of in line with the lower treble. Vocals sound almost natural. They have 
fairly good density, uh, not a lot of body, but the tone is okay. Uh, the mid-range is, is fairly transparent and uncolored. Now the treble is pushed up in line with the upper mid-range. It's, it's crisp and it's detailed. Uh, it's got good definition, it's got fairly good timber, but it's, it's not a harsh treble. It's just that there isn't really much bass to counterbalance it, which I'll talk about more in a minute. Yeah, thankfully for the, the, this type of tuning that this earphone has, uh, luckily the quality of the treble is quite good, otherwise it would, could easily become a really hot mess. As far as soundstage goes, I find this to be, to have a rather wide, sound stage but it has very little depth so it's sort of wide but it doesn't go very deep it's it sort of sits on a flat plane here and and everything's just spread out across that line so uh i'm i'm not really impressed with the with the sound stage i think it needs more body in the low end and, and a little bit more bass to add depth to it it's a very shallow stage so what do i think overall mm, some people will like it the sound is rather analytical but if you like to listen for the small details in music like the the fingers sliding on a guitar string or or someone's intake of breath or the saliva clicking around in their mouth then you'll probably like this but if you are a, a lover of a nice punchy bass this will not be very suitable for you the bass is very light it's it's too light for me I don't find these um, musical enough at all for my preferences yeah I'm not sure how people are going to react to these but personally I am not a fan I don't think it's worth the asking price I think the build quality is and the sound it comes very close but it just doesn't have enough bass and it upsets the tonal balance and it just doesn't sound natural enough and on top of that it it, it can be quite tiring and fatiguing to your ears because it's it's just all high-end sounds how it compares to the KZZS10 Pro from from the core mid-range up to the top of the treble they share a lot of similarities but the ZS10 Pro has got a nice uh, weighted base which is still maintains a fairly good speed it's got a nice uh, well extended base with a rumbly sub bass nice sub bass rumble uh, and that's important to to counterbalance the sort of bright the brightness of the of the the treble out of these and the ZS10 I would definitely choose the ZS10 actually I would also choose the ZSN Pro over these which is quite funny because uh, these cost about a hundred dollars more compared with the KZ ZS7 the ZS7 has got a lot of bass. It's the it's got more bass than the uh, ZS10 Pro and the ZSN Pro. So the K the ZS7 is a very bassy earphone, but it does have good detail. It does have good uh, presence, vocal presence, but it's not as harsh in the treble. And again, it's got that weighted low end to counterbalance the treble. So yeah, that's about it guys. That is the KZAS16. If you like an analytical type of sound, then you might well like these. Personally, I prefer something uh, more musical. I need a little bit more bass. Uh, with these, quite often the, the bass guitar in a lot of songs is, is just lost. It's barely audible. It's just drowned out by the upper frequencies and I, I just don't enjoy that. But you might, your mileage may vary. 
So we're done here. Thanks for watching the video. If you gained something from this, please consider giving it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, hit that subscribe button and I will see you in the next video.